And I'm <sighs> Muchachos y muchachas, I know, I know, I know, been out. Got a good excuse this time, I swear it. <laughs> Hi friends. I know I've been out for a while, but I've got a good reason. I've got a great reason for it. Cheese and crackers, man. So I know that I attempted to make a comeback like, you know, in the fall of last year. And for a while there, I was, you know, I wasn't as consistent as I wanted to be, but I, I did have like some level of consistency kind of. And then whilst me attempting to post and edit, edit and post an episode, I just went through it. I went through the ringer. Guys, I had the craziest tail end of 2019. I don't even know where to begin, but it was all revolving one thing, and that was my my health, my unknowingly health that caused me to go in and out of the hospital several times. It began again, you know, just one one Sunday when I was out to eat with my friend, and all of a sudden, you know, we're at this. It's called sweet tomatoes and it's like a buffet like a soup and salad buffet or whatever and so i'm eating with my friend and all of a sudden i just feel this really heavy pain or radiating pain in my chest and it resembles a little bit like anxiety but it was more painful and it, or like anxiety is more like pressure and this was actually a pain and so you know, I'm I'm over here like talking to my friend and all of a sudden I feel this pain and like it's it's a little bit not hard to breathe, but it's I can feel that my breathing is a little bit challenged. And so I basically tell her, I'm like, you know, I think I have anxiety. I don't know why I have anxiety, but it's just I have this really heavy feeling in my chest and you know my friend was like, Yeah, that's weird. You really don't have you know, you don't have episodes or I don't know you to have those episodes, so you know, long story short, I go home that day and I decompress and I think of things that would help aid me in relieving anxiety. That's usually like watching a movie, you know, getting into some loose pajamas and, you know, occasionally a glass of wine. And so I did all, all of the above. I poured me a glass of wine. I put me some really loose pajamas that were super comfy. Then I started, I proceeded to watch a movie. And, and, and I also put like a heating pan, a pad on my chest because I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe it'll ease it a lot faster. And so the weird thing is the heating pad like did ease the feeling of anxiety a bit, but um, so, so then it was like, oh, okay, that's what it was. Like I did everything good. All of a sudden the feeling just returns and I'm like laying there like, okay, that's weird. Usually anxiety doesn't return, you know, to me at least. Like for other people, it might be different. For, for me, it just doesn't, like that doesn't happen. And so I'm like, okay, let's think of things to do else <laughs> also relieves my anxiety. And usually that's, you know, exercise helps a lot. Um, going on long walks and so I think okay let's go let's you know me and Bo let's go for a walk you know and so we go for one and usually I go along a trail like close by and you know it, it it's usually soothing because there's like it's a really nice trail whatever so anyway I'm walking Bo again my stamina is like pr like pretty good it's pretty good because like I, I work out pretty rigorously throughout the week, so uh, weekly, you know? And uh, so it, sh it I should be okay. <laughs> like, you know, there's, there should be no cause for me to do what I'm about to say, but um, I'm walking Bo and through the trails, I just like all of a sudden, my breathing is just super challenged. And I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? Like, and so, and then the ch my chest pain returns. And so, I'm literally like again I I build up my I build up my stamina throughout the week like I, I I'm pretty good with my conditioning and strengthening and all that and so this is really weird for me and so I find myself like literally like 
<sighs> having to ca catch my breath and hold my knees like to to for me to breathe normal and I'm like okay that's a little bit weird long story short call my mom I'm like hey mom like this is going on and I had already talked to her earlier that day especially like when the episode had just you know began and I'm like um you know there's there's just something weird going on because like you know I, I feel like I have anxiety but it's just really really heavy and so she you know she told me she also encouraged me to do all the relaxing things and all you know take a walk and stuff like that and so when I called her back I'm like okay I did everything you said and I did everything that I thought I needed to do and yet still this thing is you know prevailing this pain is prevailing so she was like all right now it's time to go to like a doctor or something this was a Sunday and so we went to an after clinic dark doctor like whatever was available and you know for this doctor I give a pass because you you know they, these are really quick clinics like minute clinics so they're not really you know they're they they aren't as comprehensive as like you know blood work and all these things they just kind of give you like quick assessments and so his quick assessment initially he he gave me two assessments, either that it was acid reflux, gastritis, or it was my gallbladder. And so, you know, he was like, I would rather treat you for, ga you know, gastritis. And so that's what he, tr he gave me medicine for. Although I started the medication that he prescribed me, I have one of the worst episodes again. And so I go to the emergency room and, you know, pretty I mean you know for the most part they were they were okay you know it wasn't the best service that I got but you know the doctor even the emergency doctor had a pre-assumption that I, it might have been my gallbladder and yet all they did were blood and urine tests like they didn't do an ultrasound on my gallbladder you know this first ER visit basically you know I'm there they they do the blood work and they're like you know your blood looks almost your blood looks perfect you you know obviously are not obese or overweight so you know we don't suspect that this is anything serious so you know we're just going to assume that this is acid reflux and gastritis <laughs> Okay, and so, you know, this is the same thing that the doctor that I just saw the ne the day previous said, and so I'm over here thinking, okay, then just continue the medication and, you know, see if that gets better. So fast forward, he prescribes me some medicine to help, you know, what he by what he thought I had, which was gastritis. I proceed to take the medicine and oddly enough like for a good week and a half I was good like you know I, and so that really did make me think that okay well what that first doctor told me actually is the case like it, it, it must have been gastritis because you know I'm feeling all right you know Christmas comes so you know, this is all of December like you know I'm having these episodes and they go come and go away and come and go away so Christmas comes you know, I, I'm i not, it's sort of weird, like looking back now, like I really didn't feel normal, but anything was better than the pain that I was experiencing. So once it subsided, like I accepted it as normal. A few weeks later, no, actually it was like a week and a half later, it's, you know, Christmas time and, you know, you know, it's about two weeks later. And so it's like Christmas time, you know, Christmas is fastly approaching. And I have like, not not severe episodes, but I do have like, you know, some of the like sore feelings in, in inside, like in my diaphragm, but you know, I didn't really think anything of it. And so I just proceeded with life and just, you know, did what I did. And so Christmas comes, I'm good. Like, you know, I'm hanging out with family, I'm good. Like everything is fine, I'm eating whatever I want, blah, blah, blah. It's Christmas time, you can do that. The day after Christmas, literally, I'm like, so I'm, I go back to work and you know, I, I do work from home sometimes. And so I'm working and you know, I, I noticed that my back is starting to get sore and it's like sore around the back ribs, like the back rib area. And I noticed that I can't get comfortable. Like I put a pillow behind me in my office chair and I'm like, 
you know, leaning back. I'm trying to do this and that and trying to get comfortable and I just can't get comfortable. And I'm like, oh crap, don't tell me that this stuff is happening again. I call my mom and I'm like, you know, hey, you know, something's happening. Like I'm feeling like this thing might be coming back, whatever it is. And so she's like, okay, that's weird because, you know, I got medicine, I saw a medical professional, whatever. And then, so she was like, okay, well, let's just pray over it. Let's just, you know, see, let's, let's just pray over it. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's see what we need to do next. And so we start praying and I kid you not, it was like, there was a little man inside my body that had like a lever that went from zero and all of it and, and, the, and the scale from one to 10 and went all the way off the Richter, like to 11. I'm telling you, like, this was the most pain I had ever felt in my entire, my entire life. It was the worst. I'm talking to my mom. All of a sudden, it just goes I mean, off scale. Like, I, I literally, like, I'm talking to my mom. I'm glad that I was on the phone with my mom. I, I, like, found the strength to put it on speaker, like, press the speaker button or whatever. I'm telling you, like, this was, I, I don't, I'm, I don't have kids, so I don't know what labor feels like, but I'm telling you, it, this has to be comparable because this put me on the floor. I was in fetal position and I was screaming to the top of my lungs. That's how painful it was. And uh, I turned gray, gray, like gray white. It was like, I looked deathly and I, it was just so painful that I had to call 911 and I told I, sc I screamed that to my mom I was like I need to call 911 I can't like I can't I can't risk any time being left or whatever and so I do I call 911 they come and scoop me up and put me in the medical you know ambulance or whatever now here's the thing that gets a little bit frustrating and this was all an experience so you know I I learn I guess as I go but what's frustrating is just the medical assumptions that you know medical professionals try to presume over you I, I don't know how to say that in the right terms but you know I, I just don't agree with how they make assumptions based on what the last doctor said. And so they they make these like conclusions about your health and especially like just by how you look and you know pass that off as you know gospel or whatever. So anyway, let me go let me let me tell you what what happened, why I say that. So I I'm in the ambulance and you know the medics, you know, immediately they tend to me like they're they're pretty good. Start an IV, give me painkiller, which I needed a very strong painkiller to ease whatever I was going through. I'm in the ambulance. There there are medics and then there's like a head medic. And the head medic is like asking me questions, giving me these questionnaires and all these things. And I'm literally in the worst pain I've ever felt. I mean, I, I can't, I would never wish this upon anybody, but this was the worst pain I had ever felt. And I pray that that is the only <laughs> worst pain that I ever feel. The head medic's ad asking me a series of questions, what my last doctor said I had, what I think it is and all these things. And I'm like, I don't know what it is, but whatever this is, it's, it's the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And so this medic, you know, asked me what my last doctor said. I told him like that my last doctor said it was possibly gastritis or acid reflux. And so this medic takes what the prior doctor said and, and makes a pre-assumption that that's probably what I have. And he said, you know, I know he's like, you you probably have acid reflux. Sometimes acid reflux is very painful. I'm over here in my head like, you know, I've had acid reflux before. Like I, I know what acid reflux feels like. I, I know what the worst acid reflux feels like. It was nothing like what I was experiencing. It was not, <laughs> it was not that. And so they took take me to a nearby hospital. Not the first hospital that I visited, but another one because 
you know, I'm over here thinking like, well, they didn't diagnose me, so maybe they'll diagnose me here. <laughs> I get to the hospital and I see the medic talking to the medical staff, like the administration, you know, the emergency section, ambulance entry person. And he's basically telling her pretty much what I, I'm assuming what he was telling me that he thinks that I have acid reflux and they were looking at the EKG or the, you know, the heart monitor and that I don't have anything uh, of seriousness or whatever. So they literally wheel me into the waiting room and I'm, at a, I'm I'm in shock I'm in a loss of I'm like literally you guys uh, calling 911 so you could deliver me in a waiting room I mean come on long story short I and it it's painful enough that you know going through this I you know I'm in the waiting room for nine hours nine entire hours and the verdict that they give me is color me shocked gastritis and acid reflux <laughs> that's what they said that i had and i'm like if i had gastritis and acid reflux why do you have me in here for nine hours <laughs> so they discharge me with that and i'm like okay like gastritis and acid reflux they gave me a prescription for Maalox or you know it's kind of like Mylanta and I'm like okay what can I do you know this is what the doctor says I have <sighs> so by now after this discharge from the second ER visit I am fatigued because like, the, you know, I don't, I don't want to go, I don't want to be in another hospital for nine hours to get missed, you know, not diagnosed again. And so I'm over here like, okay, uh, this was like off the Richter scale pain and I need to see somebody that will give me answers. And so the next day I, I'm like, I need to see a gastro enterologist I need somebody to tell me like what it could be and so I make a first available appointment to a gastro that is about an hour and a half away from me and I'm like uh, I don't care I will go see I will go see whoever as so long as they'll give me answers I go and see a, G, a, a gastro, a, a GI doctor, uh, a doctor mind you who is supposed to be very specialized in this field and it could know every effect of everything to you know context clue into what you sh could be having go to see this gastro the gastro then diagnoses me with gastritis so this is like the f fourth time this is the fourth clinical occasion where I am being diagnosed with gastritis and I, I'm telling him and I told him all that had just happened like I saw the first doctor the, the you know the after clinics that I had gastritis the uh, ER visit the first time you know said that I had like a GI issue acid reflux gastritis and then, you know, the, so I had that 911 call was the day prior. It was like literally ye that yesterday. And, you know, they said that I had, so you're telling me that I'm driving like almost two hours out to get the same diagnosis. <laughs> I'm, and so by now I'm, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm like, am I going crazy? Am I you know, over dramatic. Is this like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, what am I to think at this point? I'm like, okay, I mean, maybe it is gastritis. Maybe I, you know, maybe I just don't know what gastritis feels like. These are the things that are going through my head. I, I don't know what else to to do you know these are doctors these are medical professionals who 
you know, specialists who have seen people day in and day out and I'm over here like experiencing a pain that I don't think I should be experiencing from home. But okay, I go ahead and I go with the assumption that yes, maybe maybe it is and I just need to stick to, you know, the, med uh, the medication regimen. So he prescribes me a brand new regimen with, you know, medication that should be stronger and so he tells me to take all of it and you know I proceed to to do so so I get my prescriptions I take them and it's been almost what has it been two days after that that visit and I'm taking the medication I'm almost through with all of it it wasn't like a long medication to take. It was like maybe a two day medication. And I am still hunched over in pain. I can't get comfortable. I can't lay down. I can't sit down. I can't lay, you know, at any angle. I'm just very uncomfortable. And I call my mom over and I'm like, mom, you know, it's just not going away. You know, I know that these doctors are saying that it's this, this one thing, even though I've been telling, like, it's like, you know, you would think, this is just a side tangent rant, but you would think, like, as a doctor, if your patient is telling you, you know, I've seen the ER, and I've seen th these other doctors that are say all saying the same thing, you would think that they would try to take steps to understand that it could be something outside of that one thing consistent thing that they've been saying you know and so I'm frustrated and I'm in pain and I'm like mom you know I need you to come over I don't know what to do I'm still in pain and this is a very crippling pain like I'm hunched over I can't I can't do anything oh I go I proceed to go back to my parents house and you know mind you I had been staying staying with my parents throughout this entire month because I just don't know when you know something's gonna happen especially that you know really painful episode where I had to call 911 that was just crazy and that was just the Thursday I went Friday to the GI doctor so it was Thursday Friday and then finally Saturday. So actually the medication regimen only really lasted like a good, you know, day and a half. And so I'm almost done with the medication regimen and you know, I'm still having the episodes, go back to my parents' house, no level of, of, of painkiller is helping. And so I finally go to my parents' house and I stay over and you know, through the pain, I stay the night. And finally, at midnight, I just cannot, I, I cannot go to sleep. It's just like, it's not that there was like a prevailing like level of pain at that time, but I just couldn't get comfortable. Like it's, I couldn't lay down. I, I just couldn't recline. Nothing was helping. And so finally, I just had it. Like I was, I was sitting there in bed and I was like, I cannot, I cannot go on, you know, with this, with this, what they think it is, you know, thinking that it is what it is because this just isn't going away. And I'm frustrated. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to, I just want to be normal. <laughs> it was just so crazy. It was just such a, it was such an annoying pain and I just want it to be normal, you know? And so I finally sit up in bed, my parents' guest room, and I'm like, this just isn't normal. Like, this isn't a normal thing. And so I finally get up. I wake my parents up, and I'm like, I'm like, guys, I, 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 I'm, I don't want to get the misdiagnosed again and that's what was keeping me from going to the hospital again because I had remember I had just gone that Thursday so I, I wake up at midnight on Sunday so I'm on Sunday night waking up wait is it Sunday night no I'm sorry I stayed with my parents Saturday and Sunday Sunday night it's actually Monday morning sorry I'm getting mixed up 
Saturday, stay there, have the painful episodes, then stay over to my parents' house, and I stay through Sunday. And then finally, midnight on Monday. So it's turning into Monday. It's midnight on Monday. And I'm finally like, look, I, I just had the last straw. I cannot take this anymore. Like, I, I need to do something. So I go to downstairs, wake up my parents. I'm like, look, I don't want to get misdiagnosed again. I don't want another doctor to, you know, tell me that something is just normal when I just feel like it's not. And so that's what kept me reluctant from going back to the hospital because, you know, this is literally, this has been five clinical occasions where I've been diagnosed something wrong and something, something not right, correct, like something not correct. And so I finally swallow my pride. I'm like, okay, I got to go to the doctor. Like I got to go to the hospital again because something's just not right. So my parents agree. They're like, you know, you need to go to the hospital. You need to go, you know, pressure them to diagnose you correctly this time. And so my sister was in town, you know, it was Christmas time, New Year's time. This was December 30th and she drives me to the ER. And I mean, it had to be like the grace of God. Like it, it had to be something I was there at the right time. I, I get admitted immediately. There's like no wait. There's no people. Um, I, I, I see the doctor almost like five minutes into my admission or, you know, ER admit. I tell her literally everything I just told you guys, like, you know, I'd been to the ER two times before. I had been diagnosed this and that and blah, blah, blah. And so the doctor, you know, she, I'm visibly frustrated and I'm like, and, and I'm not getting mad at her. I'm just like, look, I just really just want to know what it is that is going on with me and my body. Like something's going on. So she then orders what they should have ordered this entire time, which was an ultrasound on my gallbladder. And so she orders, puts the order in, and this is the, the hospital that had just misdiagnosed me the first time. So I went back to the hospital. I'm like, I'm going to give them a second chance. Order me an ultrasound. The ultrasound tech comes in and she is as nice as ever. She's like such a nice lady. And so she, you know, preps me for the ultrasound, puts the jelly. The moment that she puts, I don't know what the thing is called, like that thing that they put on your, this is my remote, but the thing that they put on your, on your skin or whatever, whenever they're doing the ultrasound, the moment that she puts that on my gallbladder area, it, it wasn't even like, a, it wasn't even a second. She was like, oh my God. She was like, girlfriend, she was like, you have got stones. She was like, you have got so many stones. She was like, I have never seen in the 10 years that I have been doing this, I have never seen this many stones in a patient. And, and she was like, you don't even fit the profile for like gallstones to this extent. Like usually people who have gallstones at this magnitude are obese and they're overweight and all these things, but you just, you don't fit the profile. And she was like, not only don't you not, do you not fit the profile, but I just have never seen this many stones in any patient that I've ever seen in my life. That would explain the pain. Fast forward, not, it, so I'm gonna put a diagram here. So this is, this is a classic case on the left. This is a classic case of you know, normal, like a classic case for complications with the gallbladder, you know, with gallstones in the gallbladder. Uh, the diagram on the right, this was my case. Not only did I have so many gallstones that were bursting at the seams of my gallbladder, but there were also stones lodged in my duct. Now, as you can see in the diagram, the tube that, there's a tube that connects from the liver and the gallbladder and they're kind of like a fork in the road and they connect and make one. So it's like two become one tube. So the stones that were lodged in my duct were blocking my liver from functioning correctly. I mean, just like, 
I, the amount of relief just for the fact that somebody like actually looked into the correct avenue or they took the correct avenue to find out what I had like and they found it I was beyond happy I was so beyond happy and so <laughs> but it's just crazy like it's just crazy like had they that was so dangerous like had I been misdiagnosed one more time I, w I, I probably would have passed away in my sleep because my organs couldn't function correctly because they were being obstructed. Um, and they proceeded to tell me that the magnitude of the stones were pretty massive, that they were causing a big obstruction um, within my, my duct and my liver functions and you know, all those things. So it was really dangerous that I had that problem. Hiya, this is uh, editing me. <laughs> editing this lovely storytelling video for you lovely people. And I forgot to mention that I actually do have images of, they're actually right over here somewhere. <laughs> um, and so anyway, I have images of these lovely stones. And of course, I don't think YouTube would allow me to post the graphic ones and uh, meaning the ones that are actually like my guts. But I do have ultrasound images of these massive stones. So if you're if you sickos out there are interested to see what that looks like, leave a comment. And if I don't get comments, then I'm not going to show you. Bye. <laughs> so, uh, fast forwarding through all of that, I needed two surgeries to, you know, get me correct. Uh, the first was to dislodge all the stones that were in the duct and then to remove my gallbladder. And... <laughs> and so they did that and I, I stayed almost a week in the hospital and that was a very new experience for me and a very humbling experience for me I value you know I valued life before but like now it's just I'm you know I, it just created another level for me like I I don't even I don't even know how to put it in words how thankful and how um how how I cherish and view you know life and the people in it even more more so and it just you know the fleeting moments that we just take so for granted it just it just really shifted my perspective I mean like before like I I had a pretty good notion about you know life and like you know just being selfless and stuff like that but this just put me over and it put me over in a new level and it, it just it's such a humbling experience so with all that being said that's what happened to me i spent the first two months of this year you know just catching up on life and work you know i had to miss work and you know, there was a lot of times where, you know, especially, you know, all these ER visits and, you know, things, I was missing a lot of work. So, you know, I was just catching up for that and yeah, just, just doing that, catching up on life. And uh, now I've, I'm healed and I feel great. I am still exercise, you know, I, I got back to exercising and eating well again and Guys, it just, it feels so good to be in good health and, you know, just take care of yourselves and like the moment that if you, oh God forbid, but if you feel like something is not right and doctors are telling you it's something that just doesn't click and it doesn't match up, you know, with your symptoms, please go, go fight for your answer and fight for, you know, a correct diagnosis because I can tell you like, this was just such a educating experience for me, especially with the, the medical field. I, you know, I just, I, I am in, I am almost appalled by, you know, medical professionals who should have taken the diligence to, you know, enter measures that, that, that could have, that could have helped me a lot sooner. 
So that's what happened to me. I hope to be more consistent. Oh, gosh, I like hate saying that because like I feel like every time I say that like I'm, I'm not but so I'm not going to say it. But what I will say is that I'm glad to get be getting back to the things that I love doing. And with that being said, Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for hearing the story. And please let me know. Have like, have you guys experienced the same like medical stuff in the past? Like, have you also had mishaps and misdiagnoses that have caused, you know, all these other onslaught of domino effects in your health or, you know, with your medical procedures and medical visits? It's just, it's so unfortunate that that's the way it is you know anyways guys that's what happened to me and yeah I'll be back bye in the hospital and uh, looks like I'm here another day uh, supposed to do surgery tomorrow now it's supposed to be today lots of stuff going on 